Windows Vista was poorly received when it came out, and is quite possibly the worst, or at least the most infamous version of Windows ever. A couple months ago, I did a video where I tried to use Windows Vista nowadays, and ultimately we kind of succeeded but mostly failed. I did get it up and running eventually, but we had a lot of software and hardware issues, but I don't think I gave it a fair shake, so I think we should try it again. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and we are going to try to game on Windows Vista. Wish me luck. All right, so before we get into this, I will have timestamps in the description below to all the games and everything that ends up happening if you wanna skip ahead, but uh, let's start with meeting the PC. So this is the same PC we used for the last Vista video. We're looking at an Intel Core 2 Duo E7400 clocked at 2.8 gigahertz. We have four gigabytes of DDR2 Patriot RAM, an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 750 Ti, a 250 gigabyte Kingston SSD that is professionally taped into the drive bay. I kind of sketchy 450 watt power supply that seems to be holding up for now, and that's about it. This system isn't great by any stretch of the imagination, but it's more than enough for Windows Vista. The computer might look boring, and well, it kind of is. The case is Cooler Master, so there's that, but it's pretty typical of the era basic black box. Since tis the season, I attempted adding some RGB, and I think that helped spice things up a little. You might be wondering why a GTX 750 Ti, and the answer I would want to give you is because uh, Windows Windows Vista has drivers for the 750 Ti, same with Windows XP, which is what I used in the Windows XP video. However, the honest answer is it's just a GPU my friend had lying around and let me use. But it is one of the last graphics cards to come out before Microsoft completely drops support for Windows XP and Vista, and so it has drivers for those versions of software. It's kind of interesting because very soon we're going to see the same thing happen with Windows 7 in January as it reaches end of life, so if you're using Windows 7, you should probably upgrade as soon as possible. But that's another video for another time. The 750 Ti is definitely older, but it should do the job pretty well for Windows Vista. In a Windows 10 PC, I think the 750 Ti would easily handle Fortnite, Rocket League, those types of games. And hopefully we'll be able to get some kind of modern title up and running, considering that Windows Vista is capable of DirectX 11, something that XP couldn't do. Where we left off last time wasn't in a good state. We had a lot of issues when it came to software, hardware, and uh, a big reason for that, I think, was 32-bit Windows Vista, among other things. So we're going to start with completely just reinstalling Windows Vista 64-bit this time, and yeah, just get a fresh start. I uh, first tried booting off of a disk I made last time, but it failed. Uh, it actually got to Windows's loading files, and then it crashed the computer. So maybe the disk uh, wasn't made properly or whatever, I don't know. So instead, I made a USB, booted off of that, and bam, we were setting up Windows Vista. It was actually a pretty simple process, and I wish that it worked this easily for me last time. But oh well, after about a half hour of restarts and setting up, we were into a very pixelated version of Windows Vista. I then uh, moved over the drivers for this Wi-Fi adapter I've been using for it, and then got the rest of the drivers for the GTX 750 Ti, and soon enough we were running 1080p Windows Vista. Absolutely gorgeous, but not gorgeous enough. You know what this computer needs? A 1440p 32-inch monitor, so that's what I brought over. And I was surprised to see that right out of the box it actually worked. I was able to turn the resolution up to 1440p, and it totally was fine. Now this is a 144Hz monitor, however I couldn't utilize that, and upon trying to utilize that by downloading and using a utility that's supposed to let you change the refresh rate as well as resolutions, I wasn't able to figure it out, it's not my area of expertise, so I decided hey, 60Hz is good enough, we'll just go with that for now. Honestly, it actually looks pretty good, I've definitely never seen Windows Vista looking better. This would be the ultimate way to game on Windows Vista back in uh, 2007, if you know, they had curved 32 inch 1440p monitors back then. I maintain that I think Windows Vista is actually a pretty good looking piece of software. As mentioned last time, it was the first to bring transparent windows, which has been a mainstay in software for almost every OS since, and it looks really cool. Of course, this was only one of the many reasons Vista was way too demanding and most XP PCs couldn't run it, but hey, this hardware is pretty decent and so we shouldn't have any issues. Hopefully, with Windows Vista Ultimate 64-bit in the latest service pack, we shouldn't have any problems. I mean, let's be real here, we will. 
but my expectations are definitely higher than last time considering how easy it was to set up Windows Vista this time. But games, I downloaded Steam using a runaround method that I found in a video linked below. Essentially, it uses an old version of Steam and blocks updates because XP and Vista was unsupported by Steam back in, I think, January of 2019. It works. Steam might not like it, but it does work. I started downloading a ton of games and then I turned to install Minecraft. If you remember last time, the Minecraft installer wouldn't even open and I didn't know why. Well, thanks to you happy people in the comments uh, who was able to figure it out, it turns out that Vista has a super dumb security feature that blocks some applications from opening if it came from another computer. You have to go into the properties and then tell it to unblock the application, and after doing so, the Minecraft installer finally opened and I was able to get it installed. Before we start Minecraft, I also tried to download the Epic Game Launcher so we could try Fortnite, and shockingly, it wouldn't install. Epic's minimum requirements include Windows 7, so that wasn't happening. I wanted to start things off with 3D Mark as it would give us an impression of how good or bad the system really is, and it wouldn't open. The system requirements do say Windows 7, so I guess that's it, and hopefully this doesn't become a trend as we try to play more games. Let's start this off super easy with Half-Life 2. That's a game pretty much any computer in the world can run. It's extremely well optimized thanks to the Source Engine, and it actually isn't a bad looking game, especially for 2004, I think. And uh, sure enough, I was able to boot into that and had no problems whatsoever. If you remember last time, as soon as it got to the menus, it actually crashed like the whole computer. So this is definitely improvement and a good sign. All right, let's give Minecraft a shot. Technically, Minecraft is now supported only on Windows 7 and up, but downloading the Legacy Launcher, you can still play up to, I believe, 1.11.2. There likely is a way to get around this and play the newest version, but I think for this video playing, 1.11 is more than good enough to at least gauge how it performs, and I was surprised how long it took to get into a game and actually load in the world. I would assume the CPU is holding things back as the GPU is actually still kind of half decent, and running around we definitely aren't getting anything remotely close to a consistent FPS. When I capped it at 60 instead of 120, things definitely got better, but it's still not ideal, and I actually think Minecraft may have ran better on Windows XP when I did that video a few months ago, oddly enough. Regardless, I did find a village and killed a few few villagers, so there's that. No reason to really include that, but uh, here we are. But let's try CSGO, a game that is often brought up when it comes to low spec hardware. It loads up just fine and I'm able to get in game, which is already an improvement over the Windows XP computer that crashed during the loading screens. However, once I got into game, there was zero consistency in the frame rate. We usually stick around 30 FPS, but the game really doesn't want to stay there. We got anywhere from 20 frames to I think even 70 at a couple points. This is on a lower resolution of 1080p by the way, not 14 40. I tried VSync, but the game still wasn't able to even push 60 FPS, even with the lower graphics settings. I don't know why this was, because a GTX 750 Ti should be able to do way better than it is, so similar to Minecraft, I have to assume the CPU is bottlenecking what should otherwise be a pretty usable experience. So far the results have been largely disappointing, but I still have hope. I put on Tomb Raider, a classic when it comes to PC testing, and loaded up the benchmark. To my surprise, we actually were pretty consistent, and watching it felt pretty smooth. The end result was an average of 51 frames per second, which isn't half bad considering we were on medium to high settings and pushing 1440p. This has easily been the most impressive experiment yet, and reaffirms to me that this PC should be more capable than what we've experienced thus far. I wanted to play Rocket League as that is an esports title that a GTX 750 Ti should be able to run, but we crashed upon trying to launch it, so unfortunately that isn't happening. I also tried Dirt 3, meant again we crashed. Are you starting to notice a trend here? Unfortunately, due to the Windows 7 requirements that most semi-modern games have, all these games just won't run on Windows Vista. The sweet spot for games that are compatible with Vista but not with Windows XP, which is really what I was curious about going into this, is a lot of DirectX 11 games that came out before or around 2014. These games can't be run on XP, or at least are supposed to not be able to run on XP, but they do work on Vista. For example, Dark Souls 2. I do find it funny that while Vista is listed in the minimum specs, it's not in the recommended specs, but that is the case for a lot of these games. You also have Assassin's Creed 4 falling into this category. The first Watch Dogs, Batman Arkham Origins, Saints Row 4. These games might run on XP, I don't know, but their minimum specs do call for at least Vista. Now I don't test any of these games specifically, mainly because I don't feel like purchasing them just for this video, but you get the idea. Theoretically, Vista should be more useful than XP when it comes to gaming, even if it's not by a whole lot, and uh, the usefulness really extends to games from 2012 to 2014. And of course, this brings up the question about the usefulness of Vista as a whole, which really is non-existent nowadays. For now, let's try playing another modern game, and one you probably forgot about, Firewatch. This is a game that I would consider to be one of my 
favorites art style wise and getting it to run here would be really cool. I started it up and to my surprise it actually works, albeit in the wrong resolution. I fixed that and went to start a new game and was soon met by a very slow black loading screen. Alright, obviously this is a joke, Skyrim didn't magically start playing, but this is one of the games I want to test. Firewatch never did get past that loading screen, unfortunately. But yeah, here's Skyrim. This is the original version, not the special edition, and as you would hope, it seems to be running decently well, on high settings and averaging upwards of 60 frames per second. Of course, nothing super intensive is happening in the carriage sequence, but this is a good indicator that Skyrim would be pretty playable. Last but not least for games, I want to try the newly released Master Chief Collection. Of course, it's not the whole collection right now, it's just Halo reach, but hey, that's the best Halo game anyways, so I'm gonna get just destroyed in the comments. Anyways, trying to load it up, we actually do see like the launcher screen kind of, it shows the anti-cheat stuff, and weirdly enough, once the loading bar completes, it tells me that I don't have the anti-cheat software installed. Now this is odd, because it should do it automatically for me, shouldn't it? So I dug around in the source files for the Master Chief Collection, and I actually found a setup file for the anti-cheat software, so I tried that and installed it, and upon trying Trying to play the Master Chief Collection again, I got this error. With a quick googling, I found out that this error is just a basic incompatibility error, as in I'm not running the right version of Windows, so there's not a lot I can do about it, at least that I know of. That's unfortunate, because Halo Reach on a Windows Vista computer would have been kind of unique. Probably would have been the only person out there in the world at the moment playing Reach on Vista, but hey, at least I tried, right? And I think I'm about done testing games. You might think I haven't tried a lot, and that's fair enough, I suppose I haven't but there isn't a whole lot of point. Of course, there's not much point of using Vista in the first place beyond being interesting, but I do think it is interesting. Vista was ahead of its time in a lot of ways, but it was also a disaster at launch, and by the time Microsoft fixed everything to the point where it was actually half decent, Windows 7 was out. And so there was never any point whatsoever to get Windows Vista over Windows XP, so most people went from straight from XP to Windows 7. And it's too bad to be honest, because the more I use Windows Vista, the more I like it. It, weirdly enough. Maybe it's just the novelty factor of it. It's so different from Windows XP and 7 and yet so similar to both of them. I don't know. I really like it. And in terms of hardware, this computer isn't anything special, but it is cool that it can at least play some slightly newer games. If I was to update it to Windows 10, this computer could honestly probably do a whole lot. And even if I updated it to Windows 7, you would see a huge, huge jump when it comes to the type of games you could play, as well as the things you could do with it. And since End of Life is coming in January for Windows 7, maybe I'll give it a shot. It could be fun. But anyways, with that, I think I'm pretty much done here. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content similar to this. You can always follow me on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech. Uh, we have a community discord that I'll have linked in the description. And I have merch still uh, that is going to probably be around for another couple weeks and then it's gone forever. So if you want merch, now's the time to pick it up. Anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 tech and I will see you all next time. Thank you.